Welcome to ForexTV.com. Today is Monday, July 7th. I'm Remy Hookie for New York Forex Market Buzz. In afternoon trade, the U.S. dollar is coming off earlier highs against the euro and is pulling back from session highs against the yen as U.S. stocks fall sharply into negative territory. And taking a look at the headlines from the CEP News Desk, Canadian data dominated the morning's economic news events. In the U.S., San Francisco Fed President Janet Yellen said that financial markets may, quote, get worse before they get better. Now, according to the Bank of Canada's Summer Business Outlook Survey, the recent spike in energy prices has caused inflation expectations to rise sharply amongst Canadian business leaders. The survey showed that the percentage of firms expecting inflation to be about 3% over the next two years has increased to 36 percent. And in key data from uh, the overnight session, the economics ministry said that industrial production in Germany contracted by 2.4 percent month over month. The upside to the report was a revision to April's 0.8 percent contraction to a decline of 0.2 percent month over month. In annualized terms, industrial production rose 0.8 percent, while April's 4.8 percent gain was revised to an increase of 5 percent. At the same time, investor confidence in the Eurozone is waning, according to a survey from Centex. Investor confidence slipped to minus 9.3 in July, the first negative reading since July of 05. And meanwhile, speaking at a conference in France on Saturday, ECB President Jean-Claude Trichet repeated much of what he said at the ECB's press conference on July 3rd, when he said he held no bias on interest rates. And over in the UK, manufacturing and industrial production contracted more sharply than expected for May. According to data released from the ONS, there was a 0.8% month-over-month in fall in industrial production. In annual terms, industrial production declined by 1.6%, and April's 0.2% gain was revised to an increase of 0.1%. This afternoon, I'm joined by Stephen Leahy, president of Back Bay FX. Good afternoon, Stephen. Hello, Remy. Thanks, as always, for having me on. Happy Monday, and thanks for joining us today. Well, as we start off the week and return from the 4th of July holiday weekend in the U.S., the dollar has started, started off on a firm note versus the majors, but is pulling back in the afternoon session. Now, the data front is quiet this week, but we will have a few Fed speeches, including Bernanke tomorrow and Thursday. But given the less hawkish statement from Trisha last week and June non-farm payrolls data highlighting weakness in the labor market, your dollar is expected to re remain range-bound. So, Stephen, if you could give us your forecast for euro dollar in the short term? Uh, sure. For your dollar, um, it seems that as we've had this um, sharp pullback move higher today um, in your dollar, just uh, since about noon today, um, we've hit the about 157.60 mark. Uh, and to me, just looking quickly at a chart, that seems to um, what we call fill the gap, um, thinking about the brutal sell-off um, from last Thursday. And so we do think your dollar is going to settle into a bit of a range here. You, do mention, you did mention that... Um, It'll be a bit of a slow week in terms of data points, and so there will be a lot of uh, intraday um, technical trading opportunities. Um, all ears will be focused on Bernanke speeches. Uh, and finally, I think that any moves that we see in the market will be rather volatile, such as the move we saw today starting about noon, um, where um, as the um, Fannie Mae Freddie Mac data came out, um, we saw the U.S. dollar to take a beating across the board. Okay, Stephen. Well, as you mentioned in afternoon trade, the broader market is turning negative with the major equity indexes sharply in the red. Also, crude oil prices have seen a sharp pullback on the day. And dollar-yen is trading at the lower end of today's range. But for dollar-yen, what's your near-term forecast? And for the yen crosses, which pairs are you watching? Uh, so for us, for dollar-yen, we've actually thought that the dollar-yen has been driven a lot by the carry trade for the last number of months. Uh, it seems in the last few months there's been a bit... Um, less risk aversion or people more willing to take on risk and therefore the carry trade has um, benefited from that. Um, we continue to think however though the worst of the kind of financial credit crisis here in the U.S. and the worst of the kind of global political geopolitical events um, that tend to cause risk aversion they're not over. So we do expect that there will be some further risk aversion going forward um, through the summer um, and therefore we think the a lot of the carry trades will be coming off due to that risk aversion uh, and finally, that's going to help drag dollar yen lower. That's the bigger term picture. In the short term, um, we're hoping right now about 106.80 or so and touched uh, 106, uh, say, 75 or so earlier, um, just a few moments ago. Um, we're going to watch this here, and we do think it's going to take a, one more step lower over the course of the next 24 hours or so. And um, we're targeting about another 60 points lower here and looking for the 106.10 level 
as a intermediate 24-hour um, target is what we're looking at. Okay, Stephen, now that we've covered the yen and euro, let's move on to the sterling. Uh, the UK currency was one of the major movers of the day, falling after the decline in UK industrial output was reported. But we also do have the BOE rate decision coming up on Thursday. So for cable against the euro as well as the US dollar, what is your recommendation? Uh, cable, you know, I will say sterling tends to, <laughs> tends to be a bit of a heartbreaker in terms of trading. You know, I've spoken in the last few weeks, um, and we've pointed out on some earlier calls that um, sterling dollar had been in a fairly good channel, uh, made for pretty good range trading. We kept seeing uh, lower lows and lower highs in sterling dollar, and we were playing that channel fairly successfully. Uh, last week, it broke out much higher and just kind of one touched above the 2.00 level on sterling dollar, and it's since fallen off dramatically. Um, you know, the volatility in sterling dollar has been amazing lately. Um, we saw sterling dollar down 170 pips from the Sunday night open. Um, and here we are now. We're back up 130 pips from the low on the day. Uh, and so the volatility there is, is intense. We do think, though, because of the fundamental factors, as you mentioned, BOE uh, meeting coming up on Thursday um, and some bad economic data that's come out from the U.K. lately, we do have a bias towards a lower sterling dollar. Uh, and therefore, we will remain in our position of long euro versus sterling. So essentially, a bet um, that relative to euro dollar, we think sterling will be the weaker of the two. And that's trading right now still at about the 79.50 level. Um, we've been calling for a revisit to the highs of a few months ago around the 0 .8090 level, just shy of 81 the figure. Um, and while events of the last few days have made us a little more concerned on the trade, we're still in the trade and not worried about stopping ourselves out for another good 90, 100 points from where we stand at the moment. Okay, Stephen, I'd like to shift our focus now to the commodity currencies, uh, starting out with the Aussie as well as the CAD. Fundamentally, the pullback in commodities and the decline in the CRB index uh, has weighed on the Aussie, but meanwhile, the CAD has advan advanced against the U.S. currency, seeing gains after the release of the VOC Summer Business Outlook Survey. So for the Aussie and the CAD against the U.S. dollar, what is your near-term strategy? So in the near term, uh, we did see Aussie um, this morning touch a kind of previous week low near the 0 0.9520 level. Um, and what we're watching for there, we've been talking about a high level put in on Aussie dollar for a while now, um, thinking that it's slowly rolling over. They have very high interest rates. They've got a lot of room to cut if and when necessary if their economy slows down. But we haven't seen it yet. And they are facing high commodity costs, which is the core element of their economy. That being said, in the short term, we are seeing if um, Aussie dollar is going to break below this 0 0.9500 level. Um, breaking below 0 0.9500 looks to us on some charts that the next logical stopping ground or area that we'd see some congested trading would be about 0.9350. That's really a target for us on a break of 0.95 the figure. Um, and then finally, you mentioned Dollar Canada, uh, Remy, and I believe we have a chart that's available. One of the things that I wanted to point out in the real short term for us, um, well, there was a bunch of um, Canadian dollar news that came out this morning um, and seemed pretty strong. In fact, um, because we saw a gap um, last night at the Sunday open, um, if you look at the chart on Dollar Canada, that gap that opened up on Sunday night, we've essentially gone back and what the traders call filled the gap. Um, we've gone back to the levels where we closed at the end of last week. Um, but to us, a, any gap on an opening like that shows us the momentum that the pair is going to move in kind of over the course of the next few days. And so... Well, we saw this gap open and kind of momentum towards us leaning towards a higher dollar Canada level. The fact that it actually has kind of come back down and, again, filled in that gap and touched down to its opening levels, or I should say closing levels from the prior week, that actually reaffirms to us. And so we've taken a chance and gotten long dollar Canada here this morning. Okay, Stephen, last but not least, before we wrap it up for today's interview, I know we just covered dollar CAD and also um, Aussie against the CAD does remain well elevated uh, for this year. Do you have any other top trade recommendations? Uh, sure, in terms of top trade, you know, one of the longer term trades that we've been um, holding strong on is a short Swiss francs versus Norwegian kroner um, trade. We've had it on for a number of weeks now. Um, long term, fundamentally, uh, we do see that the Bank of Norway um, they have a tightening bias. Their main commodity is oil. Oil is going up. They have uh, uh, lots of room to tighten if and when necessary. Switch francs, we feel the opposite about. Um, but if you want to talk a short-term trade other than that dollar Canada, uh, again, I think we're really watching this uh, Aussie dollar. It seems it's going to break below 0.95 the figure. Uh, and if so, we'll go short there and look for about 100-plus points on the move. Um, not a real, real short-term trade, but something we're looking at over the next few days or so. 
Okay, Stephen, thank you very much for joining me this afternoon, and thank you very much for your insight into the Forex Marketplace. Thanks for having me, Remy. This has been your Forex Market Buzz with Stephen Leahy, President of Back Bay FX. I'm Remy Hokey. Join us later this afternoon, 4 p.m. exchange, right here on ForexTV.com. Mm -hmm.